you know, it's just there was this crew of people that hung out on the Lower East Side and just got to know everybody. I mean, it, it was like that. It was, there was lots of scenes, but the scenes all overlapped. So you had a group over here who was really tight. Maybe you weren't as tight with them, but at night you'd bump into them. Yeah. The more you drink, you know, it's like, you know, maybe you had resentments or maybe you didn't get along that well. But when you were drunk, you all got along and you saw each other enough where it was an extended family. Uh, I mean, I always say like there was a there was a migration from the West Coast right in the 2000s. Like, strangely enough, um, some from AWR, who's my crewmate, he moved here right when I did. GK moved here right after. Um, my sister was friends with uh, with Rob and all those guys from A Life who mm -hmm. I love. And they basically gave us a home base and we met everybody through them. And because of, you know, I'm an AWR and MSK, um, the people that I initially met were writers, you know. Yeah. Uh, I was hanging out with Nate. Nate was still active. Um, GK was still active. Uh, so uh, hung out there, met, you know, most of my friends through A Life. Uh, eventually met like Iraq, all those guys, and all the people through Max Fish. And all those people who are legends now. Oh, they felt like legends then. Really? You know, fucking Dash and yeah. Ear Snot and Fanta. Like, just, you know, it's like Harold Hunter. You know, it's like they were special. There's something there. Enough for me where I was just kind of like, oh, shit. I was drawn to them. You yeah. know, um, they had an energy. And that energy translates now because it was there then. You know, it's not, you know, it's not based on nothing. They're, they were They were larger than life characters already. You know, I, I tell like a story of uh, uh, kind of keeping, having keepsakes. You know, I've been a collector my whole life. You know, I pick up something here, I pick up something there. And I picked up uh, one of Dash's old Polaroids and uh, it was broken. He was like, uh, it was just sitting there. He's like, oh, this is broken. I was like, can I get one? He gave it to me and my wife made me throw it away. And I'm just like, but you knew there was something then about these, these guys where, you know, they just shined. They still do. They're the ones yeah. who are still here. I think in, on some level, I thought that it was important. You know, did I, uh, I sensed something, you know, enough where I was like, I wanted to document it in the same way that I pick up stuff. And I, you know, it's like a drawing. Edwin's got a, you know, I'm here with Ed and, you know, Ed leaves a drawing behind. I pick it up, you know. It's like I get a feeling about something that it feels meaningful and I, I kind of chase it in a way. Um, so, you know, in that moment, you know, like, I, I definitely was taking pictures as if, you know, to me, they were stars. You know, I, I felt really drawn to these people and a lot of people who were around me. There was a real moment in time that was like beautiful. Like, yeah, yeah. So much going on. No, it's crazy. Uh, and, it, you know, it would be, you know, the morning you meet up and then it's just one thing after another would just take you. You know, you never knew where you were going to go. You never knew what was going to happen. Um, and, you know, so often we're all together and these things would just kind of happen. And I just was there with the camera, you know? I, I think it comes from just my neurotic energy. You know, it's like, um, uh, I thought about that a lot. Like, uh, I got a sense that, that, you know, I was always kind of on the outside just by nature. I don't fit in so easy and I may have friends and maybe have people who love me and all that, but I always kind of feel like I'm a little outside of the circle. And having a camera kind of made it easier for me to be outside of the circle. You know, in some way it gave me like a, a purpose rather than standing there and feeling weird, which I was weird, you know, um, made people a little uncomfortable just by kind of my nature. Mm -hmm. You know, I could shoot and it would kind of in some way smooth it over within me. I don't know if it made anyone else happy, but, but it kind of calmed me in a way. So where everyone else was maybe in the moment hanging out, I was kind of on the, on the sidelines, more watching and maybe participating by taking photos. So I think just on the nature, I mean, because of my nature, I amassed so many photos, you know? And, um, you know, it took me a long time to realize that I had actually done anything. I felt like I was just kind of shooting photos with my friends, you know what I mean? And, and it seemed like it was disposable where there were a lot of groups at that time, especially around A-Life, who were very serious and very much trying to make names, you know, people who were really trying to get their foot and do real professional work. And I was, I was never like them. So I think I benefit from just my weirdness in a way. So uh, that was just a normal day at Tompkins. Like go to Tompkins, sit at the, the TF, the training facility, 
And I remember that there was, I think they were filming maybe Dizzy or one of the videos that Gans was in, uh, uh, Sam Salganik, who's a friend of mine who's in, who was in Iraq, not a writer, but just kind of like me. It's like, you know, there was just people that were around. Uh, and uh, he was filming a video and there was a whole spectacle in the park around the Gans, you know, it's the Gans. And uh, kind of shit was happening. I don't know if it's the same day, but I have like memories of like a softball game. Um, fucking uh, Gans playing softball, uh, Fat Bill filming, Sam Salganik. And at some point, you know, this bike ride happens and they just ride by me and I'm just there with the camera. Uh, you know, it's like, that shit just happened. Yeah. You know, I have probably 10 out of focus photos of them riding around Tompkins. Uh, and that one just happened to come out. I just love that photo. KR is someone, I lived in San Francisco briefly in the 90s. Me, I'm, you know, it kind of parallels what happened in early 2000s. I moved to San Francisco at the same time, bless AWR moved there and gone AWR and MSK. So the three of us moved there, hung out, did a lot of graffiti. That was probably the one time in my life where I was truly a writer. Like we were bombing every night, like just constantly. And uh, KR, Twist, Reminisce, you know, it was really, it was that moment for those guys. And we were, you know, a couple of years younger again, looking up to them. Um, I loved KR, still love KR, but like his graffiti spoke to me, the blockiness, you know, kind of just in your face. And uh, when I moved here, he moved back. And uh, I had always been trying to meet him, and kind of connect with him. And it just happened. I was like, it was like, uh, uh, he was aware of me, I was aware of him. And, you know, he just happened to be here at the same time. And I remember I was at A-Life and he was there. And then from that moment on, we were friends. But uh, I just always loved him. How was, how was the early A-Life? I saw that video uh, you posted of oh, Rob yeah. at Orchard Street. And I think he he, go, he gets out and he's like he's like uh, fucking paparazzi, paparazzi or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It was great, man. You know those guys were doing it, you know, and they provided a place for us all to to hang out and feel welcome. And you know you sit there and it's like, I remember you know it's like I met Stay High there, met Cap, um, Is, all those people would roll through. Rob's like uh, friends from you know deep in the Bronx, you know. Yeah. Kunle was was at the Rivington Club. Um, I remember the day, I remember I shot that with the Contact 645, that was my sister's, and I left it somewhere, and luckily came back and it was still there, and that was expensive camera at the time. I think, you know, I was probably just, I, I would walk the same way every day, and it would be, you know, part of that was spend some time at A-Life, spend some time at the Riving, Rivington Club, and, you know, I'm sure I just had the camera. Kun Lane was in front, and I just took a picture. I was always taking pictures. Yeah. Um, I think the big camera that day probably changes. The, the Contact 645 was pretty pretty hefty. Mm -hmm. So it, it made it maybe seem a little fancier, but it was, in essence, the same thing.